Welcome to my madness, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about McFarlane DC Multiverse versus DC Universe Classics. And some of you guys out there are going to be like, wait a minute, DC Universe Classics hasn't been around for years. It's an older line. Why are we even talking about it? Especially in light of the fact that McFarlane is just pumping out figures left and right. Why would anybody ever care about DC Universe Classics? And especially if you're a newer collector, anytime in the last, let's say, seven to eight years, you weren't even around when DCUC was even a thing, so why do you care about it? When McFarlane has the license now, and they're just banging out figures left and right. And look, this isn't a video to try and convince you one way or the other. McFarlane, DCUC, whatever. Collect what you want. If you like McFarlane, collect them. If you like DCUC, collect them. If you like both, collect both. It doesn't matter. If you don't like any of them, why are you watching this video? I don't know, but let's talk about it. And the reason I want to talk about it is because I think, arguably, between McFarlane, DC Multiverse, and DC Universe Classics, these are, in my opinion, the two best DC lines of figures we've ever gotten. And I don't think there's really much way you can argue against that. These are the two lines of figures, especially in an age of more collectible figures. So we're not talking about superpowers back in the day, which were great. I loved them as a kid, but when we're talking about modern collectible figures, we're talking about things that look a little nicer, stand a little taller, have a little better articulation, that kind of stuff. And again, DC Multiverse from McFarlane, DC Universe Classics, probably the two best lines that we've ever had for DC collectibles, right? So there you go. Let's talk about it here because there is a lot to discuss. And from my personal point of view, which is obviously why I'm making this video, I kind of came into the whole DC action figure game a little bit late. It was something I dabbled in when I was younger as a kid, but honestly, I mean, even going back to the Mego days, there have never really been as many DC action figure lines when I was a kid throughout the 80s and early 90s as there was, let's say, Marvel or so many other lines. So when I got back into collecting at around 2015, the DC UC line was pretty much gone. We were getting DC Multiverse from Mattel, which was a cool line, but again, not something I ever really cared about. In fact, I didn't really start caring about DC characters in action figure form until McFarlane got a hold of the license. And I gotta admit, I collected a lot of those figures. I've got some of them here behind me. And I do like McFarlane, by and large, as an action figure manufacturer. In fact, one of the greatest lines of action figures that I've seen since I've started collecting here in the last eight years or so, as you can see up here, is McFarlane Warhammer stuff. They are absolutely fantastic. I love them, but I've got to be honest, given the way things have been going with McFarlane's DC Multiverse, I've become very disillusioned with them as a line. And I've started to look for other options. And when it came down to it, there was no better alternative to DC Multiverse for McFarlane than DC Universe Classics. And I gotta be honest, coming into it for the first time, I have been very, very impressed. They have done more for me as a fan of DC Comics and as a collector of action figures than any DC Multiverse McFarlane has ever put out. And that's why I wanna have this discussion because if you find yourself in the same place as me, maybe you're tired of all the bait and switch that McFarlane does, like offering a substandard version of a character when they know they're gonna release the version everybody else wants two months after people argue and bicker and freak out over whatever the last figure was, you know, whether it's Robin or Batman or the Batmobile, maybe you're tired of that. Maybe you're tired of price hikes. Maybe you're just kinda tired of random options for figures. I mean, like, how many Batman do we need in completely different body styles every time? I don't know. None of them really look like Bruce Wayne, but we've got 
57 different molds for Batman, and what, they can't stop using the bizarro body mold for Superman? It just doesn't make sense, and I've kind of started to fall away from McFarland. In fact, to be honest, I've started selling a lot of my DC Multiverse McFarland collection. I'm keeping some of them. There's some of them I still really genuinely like, and as I have done this, I've started to kind of feel the vibe of DC UC a lot more. I've started collecting more of those figures. I've started to realize how great of a line it was. And it was awesome. And I gotta say, I'm getting that great feeling from DC UC that McFarlane just never was able to give me for the DC characters that I love. Now look, there's a lot of differences between these two lines. And so there's a lot of ways in which you might have one opinion or the other, or maybe like a lot of people, you just love them both. Either way, cool, keep doing you and keep enjoying your damn collection. But if you're a newer collector and you love DC and you don't really know which one might be better for you, let's talk about it here. Now, we're gonna spend way more time talking about DC UC than we are talking about McFarlane because of the fact that, well, McFarlane is new, it's out there, it is arguably the second best action figure line as far as how much it sells, period, end of story, right now. I mean, after Marvel Legends, I would have to say that DC Multiverse probably sells more figures than any other toy company right about now. So you know about it, you know what the ups, the downs are of that line, but maybe, if you're a newer collector, you weren't around for DCUC and don't know what it offers as a line of collectible action figures, so that's what we're going to talk about here today. So first up, we do have to talk about the articulation when it comes to DCUC stuff, because it is more antiquated, it is an older design, and it does leave a little lacking, especially if you're going to compare it to modern figures like McFarlane DC Multiverse. I mean, let's be honest here. You have single jointed knees, single jointed elbows, you've got standard rotation on the wrists and that's it, and then just a back and forth on the ankles. So articulation isn't where a lot of collectors, at least modern collectors, want their collectibles, their action figures to be. And that's perfectly understandable. I mean, when it comes to articulation, there's no doubt about it. McFarlane definitely has the edge, but is that the only reason to collect an action figure? Because there is more than one reason why DCUC might be for you. So let's talk about scale here real quick, because for a lot of people, <laughs> me included, it matters a lot when you're talking about an action figure collection. I mean, let's be honest here. If you love 7-inch scale stuff, if you've been collecting nothing but McFarlane for quite a while, or maybe Marvel Select, or whatever it might be, then, you know, McFarlane DC Multiverse is definitely the way to go. It's going to fit in with your collection really, really well. But if, however, you might collect, let's say, Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe Classified, Star Wars Black Series, then what you're collecting is a somewhere between 6 inch and 6.5 and inch scale figure. That's what those lines are. And being that, Marvel Legends and pretty much everything by Hasbro, well, those are the most popular collectible action figures that exist in the world right now. And to be honest, have been for several years, that may be a large portion of your collection. And even if you're not going to be sticking DC characters and Marvel characters or DC characters and G.I. Joe or Star Wars together on the same shelf, well, there is something to be said for consistency in scale. It just kind of feels good to know that all your figures are pretty much the same scale. And that's one of the places where DC UC actually shines. They are roughly six and a half inch scale figures, just like your Marvel Legends are, just like your G.I. Joe Classifieds are, your Star Wars Black Series, whatever it may be, they fit into that overall scale and honestly just look better on a shelf next to all the rest of your stuff. 
So now let's talk about character design, because this is a big one for me, and one where I personally think that McFarlane has failed massively, because I think their character designs have overall not been good. And what I mean by that is, well, really a couple of fold. One, the fact that they always give us these alternate versions of all these characters that we want instead of giving us just good old fashioned classic versions. Unless of course it's Superman or Batman and then we get a couple classic versions, but that's pretty much it. We still don't have a classic version of Wonder Woman or Aquaman. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous at this point since he's had the line for three going on four years and these are a-list Justice League members here and we're still stuck with all these alternate versions of these characters and that's an issue with character design. Of course the other thing is something that's been bugging me quite a bit as well and that's the idea that there can be so many different body molds for a character and none of them fit the actual character from the comic books that the figures are supposed to be based on. I mean Look at some of the Batman figures we've gotten out, minus the new Nightfall Batman, which I do think is a perfect representation of Bruce Wayne in the cape and cowl. Almost every other Batman figure that has come out is completely different from one another, and most of them don't evoke that sense of an in-shape, athletic Bruce Wayne in the costume. I mean, just look at the three Jokers Batman. It looks like Bane put on the Batsuit. It doesn't look like Bruce Wayne in that thing. And the fact that not only do we have so many different, really wrong molds for some of these characters, like again, the aforementioned bizarro body constantly being used for Superman when Superman is not supposed to look like a big hulking upper body mess, that's bizarro. It makes you wonder, like, why? What's what's the point? And also, where's the consistency? With so many different Batman out there on the market under the McFarlane DC Multiverse banner, why don't any of them look the same? Why does it look like the same character just in different costumes? Why do they look like completely different characters? Body shapes, heights, lengths of legs and arms and just across the board, they just don't look like Bruce Wayne. That's a problem. Whereas with DCUC, you actually get characters that look like they're supposed to look in the comics, that have their classic looks first, always first. We get those classic looks for the characters that we love. They look right, they look proportional, and there is consistency in the line. Every Superman character looks like Superman, looks like Clark Kent, looks like the same guy, maybe just in different costumes, as does every Batman character. Character design and consistency in character design is incredibly important for me in my collection, and that's definitely an area where DCUC has a great edge. All right, so now we've got to talk about price. And you may be saying, well, how do you compare prices for an older line that's no longer manufactured that a lot of collectors still really like that probably has some collector value in the fact that it's not made anymore, comparing it to new figures that are still at retail at Walmart and Target and Big Bad Toy Store and everywhere else? Well, actually, pretty easily, and I'll tell you how. You see, you've got McFarlane, right? And average cost of McFarlane figure is gonna be what? $25, give or take, although six months ago it was $20, and then we did just get an announcement that they're releasing a whole new line of figures for $30 a piece, but we'll call it $25 for the time being, which of course is the kind of entry-level price for new six-inch to seven-inch scale figures in today's market, whether they be McFarlane stuff, whether they be Marvel Legends, whether they be Star Wars Black Series or G.I. Joe Classifieds, $25, kind of the going rate right now. So how do you take that and compare that to a figure line that's no longer manufactured? Pretty easily. You see all these figures up here? I've got about 20 of them just right here. and. I didn't pay more than $20 for any of those figures, and some of them were still brand new in the package. In fact, 
The average on this was about $15 a figure. Some of these individual figures I picked up for $8. Complete, in great condition, with all the accessories. Now that is pretty easy to look at and compare. And these figures I picked up at comic shops, toy shops, and on eBay. And I got a lot of them really, really cheap. In fact, I just picked this one up right here. This is a Cyborg Superman Mongol 2-pack. I picked this up for $35 on eBay. Now, I will say I got a really good deal on it. On average, I see these things going for about 50 bucks, give or take. But even at that price, brand new in the package, 50 bucks, that's still only $25 a figure. And then I picked up this one not too long ago on eBay as well. Brand new, Green Lantern, metallic costume, modern costume, still in the package. I mean, eh, package ain't great, but I take all my stuff out of the box anyway. I picked this guy up for $16 online, on eBay, 16 bucks. Try and go get a Green Lantern from, you know, McFarlane for $16. Unless you're getting him out of the package and it's like the John Stewart nobody cares about, you're not gonna find it for that price. So that just in and of itself shows while there are figures that yes, you will pay more for, especially in a line that isn't manufactured anymore. In general, you can still find DCUC figures very, very cheap. In fact, cheaper than you can find McFarlane figures right now. All right, so look, in general, collect whatever you want. Have fun with your collection, enjoy your collection, collect McFarlane, collect DCUC, collect whatever you want, collect them both, collect them all, have fun. I always say at the end of all my videos, have fun with your collection. And I mean that because you should have fun. But if, like me, you've become a little disillusioned with DC Multiverse from McFarlane and you've started to see the cracks in the armor and it started to bug you a little bit, just know there are other options out there. Not just DC you see, there's other great stuff as well. And I just want to put it out there that just because McFarlane is making the latest and greatest stuff doesn't mean that there might be something that works better for you out there, just like DCUC works better for me. So go out there, have fun, hit up your shops, buy McFarlane, buy DCUC, have fun, spend your money wisely, and again, always remember to enjoy your collection.